Wayne Dorban here for the bi-weekly NTP Seed webinar huddle that we hold here at our Northern Colorado headquarters in Loveland, Colorado, both live here at our site and also going out over the web to those of you that are watching. Enjoy what we have for you today. So I am so Tracy Tierney. 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 trying to learn myself and also help people figure out a little bit better ideas of growing. So sustainable ways of, of agriculture, even on small scale, even just if it's sprouts in your utility room, which I have growing right now. And we have some hens and we have a little bit of livestock and lots of growing in, in our fields as well, so trying to experiment with new ideas kind of learn and teach as we go along. So it looks like Evan has joined us. Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Oh, wow. This is uh, very interesting. <laughs> First time I've done this. I was just shown this platform yesterday by Wayne. Same here. Yeah, it's pretty here we cool, are. though. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Wayne's telling me for some reason I can type in here but not see you. Okay. Well, I see myself. Does everybody else see me? I yes. can see you fine, yep. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll take a moment, and I was a little bit late. I was having internet issues, but uh, my name is Evan Foltz, president of uh, Progressive Gardens and Progressive Farms. Progressive Gardens is a retail uh, garden consultant business, if you boil it down. We sell retail products, but we really try to sell perspective. Um, we've been doing that for about 13 years, um, and uh, Progressive Farms is a product formulation distribution company, and we make compost tea brewers, ingredients to go in that. Uh, we perform soil tests and prescriptions of those soil tests, uh, regenerative agriculture uh, type products. And we also have a 13-acre farm in Castlehane, North Carolina, right outside town. And I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina, southeastern North Carolina. And um, we it's a market farm, but it's also a research farm connected to a development that's a 25-year project that's just maybe a year in. So there's 12 families left in there, but there'll be 800. Our mandate is to grow as much food for the community as we can. And my interests are, are in measuring that uh, production towards how to farm um, through techniques that we use for people's plates and really measure that um, through not only how much food we can produce, but really what the value of the space is. It's my inclination that the more valuable the space is and the more production you get from that area, the less area you need to give someone responsibility towards to pay them a middle class income. So what I'm seeking is, you know, if I train a farmer, I want to give him three acres. Well, you know, if I want to pay him $45,000 a year, I'm going to need to create a model within that area that he's responsible for uh, to be successful. Um, and so we're looking to create that model and then outsource it. Um, so my, my real passion is in the educational end of things not being a salesman, um, but I'm kind of living in a world where, you know, in, in order to meet the economy that we live in, I'm, I'm trying to uh, work with Wayne through diff many different avenues, e-commerce, uh, et cetera, that uh, can monetize what we're doing. And really, I guess if you gave it a word, it would be creating economies. Um, I'm a, a real big proponent sure that we're standing on our two, own two feet rather than working through our driven environment, uh, however necessary that is. Um, so, you know, I, I heard a little bit of uh, what you were saying when I came on and growing microgreens and sprouts and those kinds of things are also central to what to what we do in our businesses. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here to learn more from you guys. Yeah, I'd say I could learn a lot from you, Evan. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing here, right? Absolutely. And Wayne is just typing in there that we're also on Webinar Jam. So everybody knows we're, we're out on a few different platforms. Uh, knowing Wayne, we're probably in a lot more places than Webinar Jam. <laughs> I, I can't see Wayne or, or uh, hear him at all. So it says 
or internet signal. Well, if you right. can hear me. It looks like you can just text at the uh, moment and it doesn't have enough bandwidth maybe to, to get the audio and video going. Gotcha. Mike, would you, do you like to say a few sure. words about AHC and yourself? Sure. My name is Mike Warren, the president of Alternative Health Concepts. And uh, we are just that. We are a company that uh, promotes health through natural alternatives. And um, we have a particular, which is a supplement that's an immune boosting supplement that we sell. I apologize for no picture. I'm having trouble with my camera. For some reason, I'm unable to get it to come on. So we'll go back to that. But um, got involved with Wayne. Um, at a conference last, well, actually this year, earlier in the year, and uh, joined forces with him and, and his company, and um, we're starting to market our products um, and our uh, of alternative health uh, through the internet, through Wayne's company, uh, Implator. So that's how we got here, and that's why um, he asked me to come on today, and. I, I'm sorry that I don't have a picture yet, but uh, I'm, missing, I'm missing much. Uh, what, what sort of format could, what are we doing here, guys? I think it was to be a, a gathering of a lot of the people that are involved in different projects that Wayne's involved in. Wayne just texted in there, just conversing, everybody getting on and introducing themselves, having a good chat. Um, it's a pity Wayne can't come on, but everybody, if you want to feel that you want to say a couple words, I think you just click that call in and Wayne can give you one of our spots. Gotcha. Looks like we lost Mike, so there's an open seat if anyone wants to take that. I was asked if I'd say a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm uh, Wayne and I have been friends for a few years now. I am currently assistant director at an organization called Serve Life International. And we are uh, in the. Um, we work in Nepal and India, so uh, caring for children, fighting poverty, planting churches, doing those kinds of things. Uh, I've also done work in Kenya and uh, in disaster relief zones all throughout the United States. So have a strong interest in bringing sustainable solutions uh, and long-term income solutions to families and individuals in developing countries. So that's the short. That's the thumbnail. <laughs> So currently living in Indianapolis, uh, but have been have lived sort of all over the United States over time. So, um, well, it's a pity right. you can't stay on, Tim. Sounds like you would have a lot to share. Well, thank you. I uh, just got the invite yesterday when Wayne and I talked, and wish I could have rearranged my schedule. But I've got a group that I meet with every Wednesday at three thirty. So, got to okay. head out the door. So maybe next um, time. Yeah, so Wayne Wayne wants you to introduce yourself. I really do need to go though, but thank you all and thanks Wayne for the invite I will see you next time we blab Bye right? Tim. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye Mike. So I am Teresa Tierney um, Started saving the green with Wayne probably just about a year ago um, I've been involved with the economics group of, of great businesses and companies for a couple of years now. I currently live in Ireland. I'm in Galway, so it's almost as far west as you can go. My husband is Irish and we have two children here. Um, so Saving the Green is about trying to learn myself and also help people figure out a little bit better ideas of growing, so sustainable ways of of agriculture, even on small scale, even just if it sprouts in your utility room, which I have growing right now, and we have some hens and we have a little bit of livestock and lots of growing in, in our fields as well, just trying to experiment with new ideas and kind of learn and teach as we go along. So it looks like Evan has joined us. Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Yes, can hear you. Oh, wow. This is a uh... Very interesting. <laughs> First time I've done this. I was just shown this platform yesterday. Same by Wayne, here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, though. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Wayne's telling me for some reason I can type in here but not see you. Okay. Well, I see myself. Does everybody else see me? I yes. can see you fine. Yep. 
Fantastic. <laughs> well, maybe I'll take a, a moment and just, uh, sorry, I was a little bit late. I was having internet issues, but uh, my name is Evan Folds. I'm president of uh, Progressive Gardens and Progressive Farms. Progressive Gardens is a retail uh, garden consultant business, if you boil it down. We, we sell retail products, but we really try to sell perspective. Um, we've been doing that for about 13 years. Um, and uh, Progressive Farms is a product formulation distribution company, and we make compost tea brewers, ingredients to go in that. Uh, we perform soil tests and prescriptions of those soil tests, uh, regenerative agriculture uh, type products. And we also have a 13-acre farm in Castlehane, North Carolina, right outside of town. And well, I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina, southeastern North Carolina. And um, we, it's a market farm, but it's also a research farm. Uh, it's connected to a development that's a 25-year project that's just maybe a year in. So there's 12 families living there, but there'll be 800 in the end. And our mandate is to grow as much food for the community as we can. And my interests are in measuring that uh, production towards how to farm um, through the techniques that we use for people's plates and really measure that um, through not only how much food we can produce, but really what the value of the space is. Uh, it's my inclination that the more valuable the space is and more production you get from that area, the less area you need to give one, someone responsibility towards to pay them a middle class income. So what I'm seeking is, you know, if I train a farmer, I want to give him three acres. Well, you know, if I want to pay him $45,000 a year, I'm going to need to create a model within that area that he's responsible for uh, to be successful. Um, and so we're looking to create that model and then outsource it. Um, so my, my real passion is in the educational end of things, not being a salesman. Um, but I'm kind of living in a world where, you know, in, in order to meet the economy that we live in, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, work with Wayne through diff many different avenues, e-commerce, uh, et cetera, that uh, can monetize what we're doing. And really, I guess if you gave it a word, it would be creating economies. Um, I'm a, a real big proponent of making sure that we're standing on our two, own two feet rather than working through a grant-driven environment, uh, however necessary that is. Um, so, you know, I, I heard a little bit of uh, what you were saying when I came on and growing microgreens and sprouts and those kinds of things are also uh, central to what, to what we do uh, in our businesses. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here to learn more from you guys. Yeah, I'd say I could learn a lot from you, Evan. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea. Uh, what more are we doing here, right? Absolutely. And Wayne is just typing in there that we're also on Webinar Jam, so everybody knows we're, we're out on a few different platforms. Well, knowing Wayne, we're probably in a lot more places than Webinar Jam. <laughs> Mike, would you like gotcha. to say a few Sure. Words about AHC and yourself? Sure. My name's Mike Warren, the president of Alternative Health Concepts, and uh, we are just that. We are a company that uh, promotes health through natural alternatives, and um, we, we have a particular product, which is a supplement that's an immune boosting supplement that we sell. Um, got involved with Wayne. Um, at a conference last, well, actually this year, earlier in the year, and uh, joined forces with him and, and his company. And um, we're starting to market our products um, and our uh, concept of alternative health uh, through the internet, through Wayne's company, uh, Implator. So that's how we got here, and that's why um, he asked me to come on today. And so I, I'm sorry that I don't have a picture yet, but uh, you're not missing much. <laughs> uh. I didn't mention as well, I'm doing a lot of work with Mike actually at the moment as well, where we're helping him with him, his marketing and he's got an amazing product that is really going to revolutionize immune system health. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what the product is and what it does? Sure. It's it's actually based on, it's made of thymus proteins. So I didn't even really understand what the thymus gland was about until I started working with Mike. And it's a gland that's right near our heart. And its job is to create T cells in our bodies and to also create a protein that helps to train these T cells to uh, fight pathogens in our bodies. So invading disease. Ah, Wayne, you're on. 
Well, I can I, see you. Yeah, and I'm on my cell phone. So do you guys hear me now? <laughs> yes, perfectly. Yes. It's yeah. a great picture. Uh, and then again, the hotel, I don't hear it at all. I see you guys on it. Um, thanks for coming on. And I wish we had your camera, Mike. Evan's got a great view. That's actually, a, I think, the exact same location that he was sitting at when we did a webinar with him back um, back yeah. behind. Because <laughs> I see the, the same sort of stuff in the background. Teresa's not. Mm -hmm. she's, in a, she's in a great place. Looks like she's set herself up with like a, a like curtains behind her and everything. I'm in a hotel room. Um, and Deb's not coming on, so I'm not sure whether whether she's whether we're really she says she can hear it on uh, the webinar jam. And Mark is actually seeing it. Mark's saying that he hears it and sees it. Mark's over in Bangladesh. This is really cool. Teresa's in Ireland. I don't know if you guys heard that. I know we've got several people that are on here from Pakistan um, and several other places. But anyway, the goal here today was totally just to introduce this platform. I think this is gonna be an amazing platform. I keep looking at my screen and not down at my cell phone because I, I'm used to talking to the screen. Um, so I'll look at the cell phone now. Um, and, and to show everyone how we could converse about a variety of different topics. That's, that was goal number one. Goal number two, was I wanted to get some of you to get to know each other. Evan, you, you, these guys have all seen you on the webinar that you did. Uh, Mike hasn't done one yet. We actually have done an amazing interview with him and his father and their other partner in, that, in their business there. Teresa's done a webinar with us. Um, Teresa is also one of our um, principals in our businesses. And Mike is a partner. And Evan is becoming a partner. And so we really just wanted to talk about this whole concept of an access and collaborative economy and how using resources platforms like this can be helpful we wanted to see if some other folks would come on here and ask some questions and tim who you just heard earlier you should hear about what they're doing i mean do you, you guys all know about the earthquake that occurred in nepal earlier correct in earlier in the year mm -hmm. yeah yeah well tim was over there not long after it because they have um, a, a, a series of different missions that they have over there. Well, they're making bricks now. They have, he's actually here. Um, uh, he's, a, he's from Indianapolis and he's coming out to Colorado next week to introduce me to the brick maker that um, is making a, a crazy number of bricks by hand, something like almost 10,000 bricks a day by hand um, in, this, in this village right outside of Kathmandu. Um, and so, just all these things that we do can be so supportive of each other. And this is being recorded. So after we're done with this, we'll actually edit it and we'll put it out on, uh, on, on YouTube for other people to view. And I actually have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask several of you. So I'm gonna do that here in just a second. If anybody in the audience wants to come on, we've got a, we can open up a seat. We'll figure out how to do that. And, um, and then we'll just let people go back and forth in and out. Otherwise, I'd like to ask Mike a question. Mike, you there? You hearing us? No, I'm not. No, no. I wonder if Mike is hearing us at all. Teresa, are you seeing him? We we aren't seeing his picture, but he's still on there, correct? It looks like he's up oh, now. He's just uh, we've lost just, him now. Lost. Yeah, he must have had a poor <laughs> signal. This this um, platform does take up quite a bit of resources. Maybe just a, another little bit of introduction for everybody that's on here. There are a number of these sessions that are going on where people are teaching how to use Blob. I clearly have not figured it out totally, but as you can see up on the top, um, it shows that we've had 14 people that were on, but we've got nine online right now. Um, that's what that nine indicates, and that's pretty accurate. And, and you can actually look and see the icons of the people. So we've got Zaki that's on. Uh, we've got Hamza that's on. Um, we've got Evan, which we know. And by the way, I would highly recommend that we all follow each other. And that's why, that way, if we do different um, of these, and you can just hover over a person's icon, and then you can follow them. And um, I'm just clicking on everybody as we're sitting here and, and following them so that I've got it. And that way is that we'll be notified if, if people are on. It looks like on my screen, it'll only show seven of the nine people that are on. Um, you, I don't know if you guys see different on yours. I'm on my, uh, on my laptop as I'm looking at this. I wish Deb would in back and indicate. Looks like Mark says that he sees the screen. Um, Mark, would you indicate whether you're hearing us well? 
um, on Webinar Jam. And Deb, you might do the same thing. Actually, she says we're coming in very, very, uh, very clearly and that she's muting it on hers. Um, and then the other thing is over on the left, you can tweet. So uh, I've already sent out a couple of tweets. You can actually notify your audience through, uh, through tweeting. Um, and I've, I've been on a couple of these that there's been as many as 700 people on. Um, and you'll see people rotating on and off probably every, you know, every couple minutes. And so we have an open seat. Anybody who would like to come in with us, there's an open seat right now. Come on in and ask Teresa questions about saving the green or Evan about progressive gardening. Um, tell us about micro, um, what you're doing with your new initiative. Uh, Evan, let's talk a little bit about that while you're here. Yeah, well, uh, we're trying to create a brand called the Microbe Makers. And part of that is manufacturing uh, two different kinds of compost tea brewers. Uh, for people that don't know what compost tea is, it's, it's basically a, a way of growing microbes through an aerated water solution, uh, not unlike an aquarium where you aerate water for fish to breathe and compost tea, you're aerating water for soil microbes to breathe. Uh, and then what you do is you feed them organic fertilizers like molasses or fish or kelp. And in the presence of oxygen and food, the microbes grow to extraordinary concentrations. So it's, it's a bit like, you know, composting concentrates soil for human benefit. Compost tea concentrates compost. Uh, and what that represents is, is a component of a method of agriculture that we call bioenergetic agriculture. Uh, and that references the physical, mineral, biological, and energetic, uh, and the water and carbon potential of a living system. And in our evaluation and experience, fleshing those out gives us a complete platform in order to consult with people on you know, structuring their water to get more out of it or balancing their minerals through soil testing or ensuring uh, biological diversity or proper soil structure. Uh, all of these things are relevant. And um, so through the Microbe Makers, we, we look to kind of create a platform where people can learn about these things and most importantly, have an experience with how well they work. Um, we do that by selling these brewers to dealers. Uh, we've got maybe almost 100 of them around the country and people can walk into the store and pick up compost tea and have an experience with growing with microbes. And uh, it's been my experience that, you know, when you have that experience, it's, it's really not a sales process. It's really a matter of time uh, towards the ability to regenerate uh, the application that you're approaching. I, I was talking with a pasture farmer today who was having uh, specific issues in several parts of his pasture. And you know, we basically deduced it down to he needed a soil test and to begin to, in his composting operation, use diverse soil microbes. And it's really a, a rewarding experience to walk through that kind of uh, relationship with someone and have them come out the other side with success. And, and that's really kind of what drives the passion of what I do is trying to, you know, I came from a place of not knowing these things from a major university and not really being taught uh, in the way that I wanted to learn. And in a lot of ways didn't know I wanted to learn and have been inspired by so many different facets of this. And I, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, one of the things about Wayne that's so great is he's, he's such a champion of getting people out there in front of other people that have the thirst for this kind of information. And if you've ever had the, the chance to, to be inspired by this, you know, one of the repercussions of that is wanting to inspire more people. I, I've already said, Wayne, a couple times today that uh, that idea of, you know, the 90 percent, 50 percent, 5 percent on, you know, if you teach one person, it's 90 percent chance of being forgotten. And if you teach someone to teach, it's 50 percent. You teach someone to teach to teach. It's only a 5 percent chance that it'll be forgotten. And that, that's a very inspiring idea. And it's something that you know, I look to, to build upon in the future. So microbemakers.com is the website and you can read about bioenergetic agriculture and about the products that we formulate. And uh, we'd love to work with anyone who has an interest in it. Awesome. Um, Teresa, just because I think there's some compatibility with what, what we're doing at Saving the Green and what Evan just talked about. And I'm not sure that I've ever even mentioned to Evan what we're doing with, uh, um, with the cutting globes. Talk, talk about the cutting globes a little. And I, I, I can't imagine you have any sitting right next to you there in the office, but if you happen to, you could even put it up so we could see oh, it. But, uh, I but don't, tell, and tell I it. used to have a box right there, and I've moved it. Um, yeah, so sort of in a similar way, we do some educating, but we did also move into the retail space recently, um, you know, trying to fund some of the projects that we're doing. And we just happened to come across this product. It was invented by, would you believe, um, an Irish uh, landscaper just an hour away from where we live and it, he just happened to be on a news show talking about this product and it's a way of air propagating. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. 
it's air layering. Um, so you take what you do is you you hone away some of the the bark on a branch and then you enclose it. He created these globes. It almost looks like what you would get uh, a toy in from a vending machine. Um, and there's but there's holes on either side, so the branch gets clasped into this globe that's coming out of either end. So you take away the bark, you, you put some rooting hormone on it, and then you fill the globe with soil with damp compost. And it closes it around there, and usually between about 8 to 12 weeks, depending on what type of plant it is, you've got that globe full of roots. And then you can cut the branch off and plant it right into the ground. So the amazing part is, as you know, with air layering, you can have a tremendous branch, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can do this with rather than, you know, taking a tiny cutting. You can literally have mm. a four-year-old, <clears throat> the equivalent of a four-year-old tree when you're finished. The um, success rate, too, right? Rate. I mean, trying to clone a, a hardwood is a very low success rate. We, we used to use, uh, like, uh, cola bottles, soda bottles. You know, and you cut, mm -hmm. it's kind of a similar concept of what you're talking, probably a lot more efficient. Right, you do. right, exactly. And it, I know a lot of people were wrapped in plastic or this type of thing. And I know there's problems with those where these are just so quick and easy. They fit, they come in a few different sizes, so you can fit them exactly for what size branch you've got. Um, they're reusable. They're reusable. Um, they have a UV filter in them as well, so the roots don't get damaged. Let's say the bottle. The, the UV um, light coming through would actually grow algae on the inside, which would inhibit the root growth. So they're wow. a pretty cool product. We've we've launched them um, in the UK market so far. So we're on Amazon in the UK. Whoa. We'd Working love to hear more about that in the United States. Let me know. I, yeah. I could probably help you with that. That would be very cool. I will definitely, it's a pity, I did have one right near where I'm sitting, but I'll, I'll get you a picture of it and I'll send you some links to our, our store in, on Amazon. Great. And very I'd love cool. to, so I was do you mind if I just ask Evan a question? I know you said you you learned a lot in, in university, but you didn't learn what you have learned since. And I'm just curious how you did learn that. Was it from experience? Was it finding mentors or how you went about that? Wow, that's, that's one of my favorite questions. I, I, there's a book called Secrets of the Soil that uh, if you've never heard of it, anyone out there, please write it down and, and follow that thread. Um, it, it's a very profound book because it's written by people that, you know, a, a lot of, of what we do is new to people as it was new to me. I'll come, you know, school is very analytical. It's scientific method. It's a hypothesis. It's a theory. It's a law. And it only becomes law when it's replicable. And the reality is nature doesn't work in replication. It, it works in chaos, chaos and spirals. And qualitatively, um, one, one no person is the same, same or no snowflake, snowflake is the same. same. Um, so, so we tend to kind of limit, kind of limit the, potential the potential of, you know, of you know, understanding, understanding living, living systems by taking an analytical approach. approach. And that's what reaches a textbook. So, so I learned a lot about that. And I wasn't inspired, inspired by it. Um, but, but at the point, point where I, I got, got out of school and I was putting that pressure on myself to go get a job and be a big boy in the real world, I really didn't want to do anything with it. And I, I moved to the Virgin Islands and, and met, met a roommate down there, down there that introduced, introduced me to what's called, what's called a biodynamic farmer. farmer. And, and uh, I, I've been in the same week found this book called Secrets of the Soil that, that was kind of the stereo instruction to that. Well, well I, I had this book that I didn't believe half of it. And then, and then here, here comes, comes this farmer that helped me start validating, validating it. And it, and it gave me that experience, experience kind of get over the hump. hump. Uh, uh, that's, that's rubbish. rubbish. You know? But, but I lived it. it. I'd, I'd seen it work with my own eyes. And you know, yeah. once you reach that point, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what someone, someone says to you. Um, so, so one of my, my favorite things, things, I appreciate that question, is to that book. Because it really was, it lit my fire. And it really told me what I needed to be doing in a way that, like I said, I didn't really realize I wanted it. No, at the time. So anybody else that's out there, Tyler, I know that you're out there. Tyler is somebody that we're just talking to to potentially have become part of a team, our team as a social media marketer. And he's had a lot of experience. He actually worked with Sony Records and did a number of things. If, if he's out there and like to come on, jump in. Bob, you're out there. I know you're out. Um, I know that uh, um, Hamza's out there, that Derek's out there. If you guys want to jump in, jump in. That's the whole idea of this is that uh, we can just chat with each other and ask questions. Um, Evan, tell everybody about what it's like, what, you know, you're part of the world there. What, what kind of, if you're doing the, the kind of farming that you do, 
Um, are you in an urban setting, suburban, so on? How big is your farm and so on? Yeah, uh, well, our farm is, is 13 acres total. It's about seven acres arable, six acres woods. Um, we, we, we've, our, our approach is somewhat um, different than a traditional farm in that we have an active community. And, and I actually find it very interesting and I'm, I'm very encouraged by the potential of this because there's a, there's a group that is developing this part of New Hanover County, which is a very small county in it, and it has a very large town for our area. There's maybe 125,000 people in our town. That's not large at all. But for our area, it is. Um, so it's a very small county. And the last little nook of it, the northeast corner, is called Castle Hain. And it's the southeast of North Carolina used to be the breadbasket of the south before food was distributed back in the 1900s. You, you can almost grow year round here uh, most of the time. Sometimes you have to take a little bit of measure and protect your plants. But you can pretty much grow year round. So it, it was very conducive to food production. And the history of this place is very exciting for farming and it's having a bit of a re renaissance. We're going to a Carolina Farm Stewards Association conference this weekend that we're preparing for today. And they've got more attendees at this event than they ever have. I think it's more than there's 1,200 people that'll be there and there was 800 last year. So it's, it's very encouraging what's happening. Um, but this farm is basically a rural area, um, more or less. It's maybe 15, 20 minutes away from downtown. But um, Nobody, when you develop a piece of property or an area, nobody really wants to go first. You know, uh, There's no infrastructure there, these kinds of things. And this development that we're working with found an ideal piece of property on the Cape Fear River, and they went first. And their idea was to market a farm to produce food for the community um, as an amenity, really. I mean, if you boil it down from their perspective, they don't view things. I mean, they've come to understand and appreciate where we're coming from, but they, they want the farm to sell lots. They look at it like a swimming pool. So the benefit to us is that they get to, that we can use them as somewhat as the bank. Um, and you know, anyone in the United States these days knows how hard it is to get a loan from a bank, particularly for starting a farm. Um, so the opportunity to do that was was uh, you know very welcome on our end. And you know what what it, where I find myself with it is you know the method of farming that we undertake changes based on. The, the population of, and the type of consumer that we're growing it for. A, a lot of traditional farms, you know, they may grow as many carrots as they can and sell them in on, on as many markets as they can. Well, well my particular interests are in, in what kind of method and production uh, approach do you take to grow food for people's plates? If, if you're responsible for feeding people, how does that change the way you farm versus from strictly from a business perspective? And I think where we're moving towards is that the value of the ability to do that is on the rise. Um, I, I particularly, you know, I'm not what you would call a prepper um, necessarily, but I, I do think I keep my eyes open to how the world is, is moving. And the idea of decentralization and being able to support ourselves in a local food shed is more important now than it was 10 years ago. I can tell you that because I've, I've been doing what I've been doing for 13 years. So the opportunity to have this funded project that, you know, we got to pay them back over a period of time, but the idea, the opportunity to have uh, this project to grow for a population of people in a measurable way. Um, really, we can once we've figured that out, it may be that we grow 90% of their lettuce and 75% of their carrots or whatever the equations that we end up with are. But then our, my interest is in outsourcing that and really working with people that are already doing that uh, or new developers that want to do it to sell their lots or, or whatever it might be. So. Um, yeah, you know, we're still working the kinks out. We're about a year and a half into the project. Uh, we, like I said, we've got 12 families there now. There'll be 25 by spring, so 800 in the end. So we've got some time to figure it out. But I, I look forward to keeping people updated on the progress that we're making. Awesome. We've got a new uh, a new blabber here with us. Um, Bob, how mm -hmm. you doing, man? You look like you just came in out of the out of the snow. Well, yeah. In Grand Junction, and it, it does look like I've been through a storm, but uh, I'm dry and I'm comfortable. It is taking me a real challenge to get tied into you guys. I've been listening to you, but it's been uh, technologically, I'm not what you'd call the biggest rock in the bowl, but uh, I finally made it, it after having missed part of it, but I listened to it. Thank you for having me on. And everybody, this is uh, Bob Salazar, also one of our partners, and Bob has an amazing product um, called Alpaca Gold, and and Bob, you were breaking up just a little bit as you were talking there, but why don't you tell everybody about your product and what you're doing with your business? And it looks like maybe Happy Happy Dance Farms must be a friend of yours because I see that 
that that's another, or, or maybe that's what you've come in on. No, you're a separate one. So somebody else out there is, uh, is there that knows, that knows you too. So tell us about Alpaca Gold. Well, Alpaca Gold is a, uh, you can call it a byproduct of the Alpaca's digestive system. Uh, we take and gather the, uh, the uh, poop, as they call it, from the fields, uh, dry it, uh, and then process it and, and sell it commercially uh, to anybody who's wanting to get an organic fertilizer uh, in their gardens. And it's great for houseplants, too. Uh, we've been in business about two and a half years, and uh, it's been a real challenge because uh, the uh, knowledge that the product's so good has been somewhat lackluster. But with Wayne's help and a few other things going on, we're getting it out on the market. We just signed a new agreement with a processing company here locally on the Western Slope. And uh, so we're going to be able to produce it in large volumes. We've also added a special ingredients to it, uh, which is called neem cake. And any of you guys that are familiar with that product, uh, you know what it does for the nutritional value of the plants, but also the insect repellent capabilities. So I think the product's going to do very well and uh, just need to get more of it out there on the market so people can enjoy good, clean, healthy, organic food. And I'm going to ask is Happy Dance Farm, you're out there um, and, and you say that you're you're in East, you live in Eastern Colorado, but in Grand Junction, if you want to jump in, just just give me a little message here and I'll maybe ask if uh, if Teresa jumps I'll off step. for a second or, or Evan, we'll we'll figure that out. Don't go out. Oh, all right. I guess Evan already <laughs> went out. <laughs> um, so I'll jump. I'll add him back in. Actually, no, he didn't come back yet. Um, Bob, so what were the technical issues you were having getting on? Because this is a new platform for all of us. We're all. Uh, well, I've never, this is the first time, Wayne, you're going to find this interesting. This is the first time I've ever been on Twitter. I've never been on Twitter before this presentation here. And like I told you, technologically, I'm not the smartest uh, rock in the bowl. So it took me a while to try to, I, 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 I came in and out probably 20 times. I lost track how many times I fell out. But it, uh, and I'm not even sure how I got connected this time. But I think, I think it's an excellent platform for talking and sharing ideas. But, uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. It, yeah, it was a challenge. And like I told you, it's uh, somewhat frustrating. Yeah, well, we've got, we've got 12 people on right now. And I do Great. see that it's Richard Taylor that is at Happy Dance Farm. And he says he's heading in new directions with a map from the past. Time to see what, uh, what grows from the seeds of time. And it's pretty cool. So, uh and he says he's interested in aquaponics and vertical farming, which we are too, uh, Richard. And we'll certainly be talking about that and others of these adventures. And honestly, what we're going to try to do for everybody is we're going to try to have separate blabs or blobs. I'm not quite sure. Anybody who's on this a lot might even say, how is the right way to pronounce that? But for each of these different businesses that we're working with here at the Center for Economic Excellence and Development, and as I told everybody else, we're actually going out live over um, another platform called Webinar Jam right now. Unfortunately, we, I don't think we have the sound coming to that. And I know one of our visitors here, because he's on, is Mark, and Mark is also on, on Webinar Jam, which is another platform. Um, anyway, bottom line is that this is an amazing tool to get our messages out to the public. And, um, and that's what we're going to try doing. And so, Bob, I'm going to recommend that we do one or more of these, let's say, a month for you, for Alpaca Gold specifically. Sweet. Evan, Sweet. We're, we'll want to do the same thing for you. And, and Teresa, you know what we're going to do together for, uh, for saving the green. And for I think Mike's still online here, but we, he must have a bad signal right now. Um, and one thing about Blab is it does seem to take up quite a bit of resources. You might want to try it out yourself, even on your cell phones, like I'm doing right now. So hook it up to Wi-Fi from your cell phone. It, it might be that it works well that way. Actually, um, Richard says he has no cam on the recorder. And he says he's in the greenhouse at the moment, which is actually pretty cool. And, you know, again, I could, I could use my phone. You know, you're not going to really care about my hotel room. But think about the cool things we could do. Evan, what if you were out on the farm right now? We wanted to use this as a teaching tool. And all we did is used your phone. And I, I'm kind of watching it. And let's say... You're, somebody was doing this, and instead of seeing my hotel room, instead that was the field. And you know, look at the quality here. I can zoom right down in and see that computer. You know, almost read the words on that. I mean, can you imagine what we could use? That's just from my iPhone. That's showing. How did you? you know, how did you access it? Was it an app, or did you find through the internet site through no, a, a browser? I'm always looking at this kind of stuff, and and I've been using another platform called Periscope some. And Periscope's actually owned by Twitter. 
And with, with Periscope, just one person can be on. So essentially, I could be here talking to all of you. And on Periscope, you do have a chat that you see. And so you can interact with people and, and, and give them messages just on the chat. But you can't do what we're doing now. Like Bob came on just a little bit later. We added him on and so on. And again, we just had another new person come on here. Let's see who this is. Um, it looks like we've got, uh, oh, that's Tyler again. Tyler, again, is somebody who, that we're interviewing and talking about doing some things with us in, uh, in the marketing side. He's got social media background. But anyway, that's, I found it just because I know a lot of other people are beginning to use it. And I don't know if you've how looked. Do, how do you it. access it on your phone? It, was oh, it an app? Oh, you're or? right. I'm sorry. It's an app. Yes. So it's, an app. Um, it's not an app yet in the Android uh, world. So right now it's still just on iPhones. But you could access it on your phone just going into a Chrome browser just the same way you've done it on your, on your um, computer there. And, and then you can just get into it through your Chrome browser. So gotcha. that's another way to get into it. This is the first time I've actually used it on my phone. So my phone boy bailed me out today. For your benefit, Bob, I couldn't get on earlier because I was seeing everybody. And I was hearing everybody. I was even seeing myself, but nobody else was seeing me coming in from my computer. And I'm on an internet at a hotel. So I'm sure the internet quality here isn't the best at the hotel. And, you know, that, that was just what was happening with it. So um, I just decided I'd try to get it on the phone. I can see the quality on Webinar Jam is awesome as I'm looking at this. And Deb, you might put a, a note in. And again, I know you're not hearing anything. I was, I, at first, I had you guys going across to where she could hear you. But then I started to get feedback when I came online. So we're still figuring out the glitches, obviously. But I just see this as an amazing tool to help us teach people all over the world. I mean, Bob, we could teach people about, about your alpaca gold. We've got people right on here today from Pakistan and Bangladesh and Ireland and all over the world. Evan, that's same cool. thing. Your message can be going out to the world. And that's what the goals are here with using yep. this, it, this kind it, of it's tool. Technology at its best. Right. And right. Uh, what's interesting is Happy Dan Richard said, I have a background in video conferencing as well as offline seminars and speaker presentations looking to take that background to enhance awareness about sustainable ad. You're in the right place, man. <laughs> That's what we do. So please follow us. Um, and, you know, any of you right now, because I'm trying to mitigate, Teresa, just type in, um, type in the Saving the Green URL. All of you, type in on the screen your, your URLs for your sites. So, Evan, you do the same. Uh, Bob, you put yours in. Teresa. And for Richard, anybody else watching, we would all love to like, love to get connected with you. Um, he says he can't come on in. So if you just give us your, 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 either your email address or your URL, then we'll just reach out to you. Um, and Teresa just put hers on. And I hear somebody else typing, so I'm sure they're going to get those on there. And, and Richard, we'd love to connect. Make sure everybody go up and follow everybody else. Um, and he just says that most definitely he'll follow up with everyone here. And um, Bob, actually. So, um, Bob, you put in Keyhole Academy. Are you unable? You must not have a, um, a webcam or something because Bob's come in here. I think I've seen him come in on Keyhole Academy. And I thought he saw him come on his name. And Areeb just said, this is pretty great, guys. So, Areeb, Areeb you know what? Um, maybe I will. Evan, jump off for a second. Let's see if Areeb can come in. <laughs> So, Areeb, check in and, and, and click on Unlock the Seat. All right, here we go. We're going to get Areeb coming on. Areeb is one of our staff in Pakistan. And we're going to enjoy Areeb when he comes up. Areeb, man, you're, we're, we may only have audio because it says you've got a poor internet signal, but I think we're going to be able to hear you. Yeah, no, it's not a poor signal. I don't have a webcam here. If I was oh, at home, I could have a webcam. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, he sounds great. Some... Yeah. yeah, and I can see everyone, and hey, Rob, and hey, Teresa. Hi, how are you, Reeb? I'm fine, thank you, guys. And this is something really great. I am enjoying this a lot. <laughs> so, everybody, this is who helps connect us when we do stuff together. So, Bob, when, you've, when we've scheduled calls and meetings, Reeb's the one that does it for us. So, uh, Absolutely. Isn't, that, isn't that cool? We're getting him. Areeb is actually a rugby player, and um, we always talk. The World Cup Rugby Championship just finished, and um, 
he was rooting for Japan and Ireland, but neither one of them did. <laughs> they made it a ways through, actually. <laughs> Um, and then the, the All Blacks from New Zealand ended up winning it all. Um, yeah, they deserve but, uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. They deserve it. But still rooting for Japan next time. The World Cup is in Japan in 2019. So it's really, ah. it's really good news. It's in Asia. Hey, Wayne, out of curiosity, you can only see people at four at a time on this on this system? Yes, that's correct. And so, so if you had 20 people attending, then only four could be viewed at one time. Right. But the whole idea, as I said, Bob, is like we just did with Evan. If, if I see someone else indicating by the chat over here where you just put in your information that uh -huh. they would like to be on, I'll just ask somebody because I'm the one moderating it and I have oh, control okay, of the okay. screens. And I actually don't even have to ask, but I could just, if I wanted to, I could get upset at you. I could just click you off right now. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm, I just want to, I'm just curious. That. But, but that, that, that way we could get other people on. Um, okay. Is if Derek wants to get on, actually, I'm going to do it. Teresa, I'm going to jump you out for right now, okay? And then um, I'm going to see if, good. see if Derek wants to come in. So, Rob, can you tell me about Alpaca Gold a little bit? Because I was hearing you and uh, you were talking about something about Alpaca Gold, and I really want to know what it is. What, what it is, Areeb? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is just the uh, it's the Alpaca uh, Poop, Areeb, that we gather out of the fields. Uh, we take and dry it, and uh, and then we process it. We have three different levels of product that you can buy. Uh, and recently, we've been mixing it with another product uh, called Neem Cake to enhance not only the MPK value of it, but also to uh, it's got a, it's a natural insect repellent. And so it's finding a very very it's a good market okay. in Colorado. It's, it's, a product, it's a product that's time has come, Arib. Oh, okay. And it's 100% organic, all of it. So it's uh, biodegradable. Uh, it goes back into the earth, just helps enrich the soil and helps the plants that uh, you're introducing it to for growth. Okay, okay. We have something here in Pakistan called urea, something like this, I guess. Because I'm not uh, an agriculture guy, but I heard, uh, I, I see commercials. And we have something here called uh, Sona urea in Pakistan, which is something kind of same as uh, your product here. And um, I will give you information about it. I will search about it. And uh, I think uh, you should know about it, what other countries are using. If you like to penetrate in Pakistan, Alpaca Gold can make a lot of uh, noise there. Absolutely. So, yeah, send me all the information to read that you've got, and then we'll communicate and uh, build a friendship. Sure, sure. No problem. I will do this, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, we have a seat open. So, Evan, why don't you, you come back on? And um, let's see, we've got, oh, you know what? Bob's coming back. I'm going to see if we get Bob, uh, Mike back on here. Mike, is this you? Are you coming back on? It is, if you can hear me. Oh, yeah, we hear you great. And it's I a thought little maybe bit the like... camera was working, but I guess not. <laughs> and so. and, and, and you've, you've, you've used it before, right? Oh, yeah, it's just for some reason yeah. I, I'm having trouble. I don't know if somehow it got uninstalled or not, but uh, I'll have huh. to make sure for the next one we're good. Um, you know what, Mike, we didn't get a chance to do this. And obviously I had a problem with my audio before. Tell everybody about, um, about what, um, AHC does and more, most specifically about BioPro plus your product. Okay. Obviously, uh, well, what, what, uh, alternative health concepts is the name of the company. And, um, we are a natural health. We can hear Mike. Cannot hear. Bob, are you hearing Mike? Because we're, I'm hearing no. him fine. No, you're no, not. I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing anything, uh, Wayne. And that's what's in it. Remember, Mike, we said this before that would you guys couldn't hear me. I can yeah. hear I can hear you just fine. Okay, I'm not well, quite sure why. We'll get we'll um, get it but, squared away, and then on the next one, I'll come back in. Oh, I can yeah, hear we'll you. I can hear Rob, but I cannot hear Mike. Yeah, we're, okay. I guess. Well, so Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock you off real quick, and maybe uh, see if we get Evan back on because uh, we were getting Evan coming through. Uh -huh. Um, now I'm going to ask everybody what what kind of a, of a, of a internet signal? What are you using, Evan? Is it a um, are you through a Comcast or through a hard line? What's your signal? Just to see it's what is bad with this wireless uh, Tom Warner cable. I, I don't okay. know. I don't know what the specs are. Okay. It's, it's commercial. And Bob, how about you? What's your connection? I, Do you know? I, I, I'm on wireless at my house on my uh, other laptop computer. Okay. 
Let me give both of you guys, everybody that's listening, actually, a little hint of something you can do. Go to a site. I'm going to name it down in the chat section. I had to drop my phone down, so you're seeing my ceiling right now. Apologize for that, but I'm going to type it in here. Put in a site. It's a, a site's called speedtest.net. And you know that you can just click on these, actually. Um, they're actually clickable links over here, which is what makes this pretty cool. What is speed what? Uh, I, just, I just typed it in. Um, oh, so gosh. these guys, by the way, you know that these are clickable links. So you could actually open these. And I think they'll open in a separate browser. Actually, they do. And so if you click on it, so speedtest.net is a way in which you can find out all about the speed of your browser, um, how much delay there is between upload time and download time, what your op upload speed is, what your download speed is. And it'll, I think it'll give you good information about whether you're going to have really good signal when you do something like this, where um, these kinds of broadcasts actually do take up quite a bit of bandwidth at times. So... Um, obviously, you guys have all, both got excellent connections because your your pictures, the, the, your quality of your HD picture, um, Evan is just awesome. Bob's is a little bit less, yeah. and mine's coming off of. Yours is very good on a phone. I mean, it's it's kind of it makes me want to try mine on my phone and see what happens. Maybe I could be on here yeah. twice. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I was trying yeah, to get an right here, but uh, I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Well, I, Arib, I'm going to knock you off real quick here and see if anybody else sure. wants to come on. Um, but hey, man, thanks okay. for coming on, and um, we'll we'll jump yeah, you no off. Problem. We'll play you. Yep. Take care, guys. All right. So um, so there's an open seat here. We're gonna go for about another ten minutes or so, and um, next time we'll figure out how to make it work with Webinar Jam also. Um, and and my external webcam, Deb was telling me is better. I, so what I'm doing, I'm talking into my. You guys see it? You can see what you're you're seeing there. You can see that I'm I'm talking into my my uh, my other computer, my Mac, um, as we're doing this. So uh, where are you at, Ray? I am in Cleveland, Ohio, right now. How's the weather? Um, it is uh, beautiful. Um, Seventy-five today, and supposed to be that again tomorrow, and then it's going to cool off here. I haven't asked Deb. She's a, we our weather in Denver is supposed to be. Um, getting worse, and I think I think we might be getting what you have um, in your direction. So. Yeah, it's coming your way. Yeah. Um, so when in Colorado. Me, yeah. What's that? Yeah. When you're in Colorado. Right. Whenever you, the thing about Colorado is, if you don't like the weather now, it's going to change in five minutes. Um, Amen. I was telling Evan something yesterday. I want to throw out to the whole group here, just because it's it's something that that we use as a philosophy of our doing business, and I'm not sure that I've told it to anyone the way I kind of did with you yesterday, Evan. And that is that I was I was taught by a very bright in, um, education person many many years ago that if you really want to teach something that will stick as a legacy, if you want it to really get out there into the world. You need to teach people. I'm pointing to the phone here to where, so you need to start, I gotta forget that I'm not using my webcam. You're the teacher up here. You need to teach someone here and they will teach someone. And then finally the, the third level of teaching, it's gonna stick and it literally won't go away. It'll stay there for generations. So here's what statistics have shown. If I teach Bob something, I teach you how to run this program, for example, and I teach 100 other people, probably only about 20 to 30 percent of that knowledge is going to stick. The rest of it's going to go away. 70 percent of it's going to be lost. However, if I teach it to you and then you teach it down another generation, the next generation down, it will stick at about 50 percent. And finally, the third generation down. So now you teach it to Evan and Evan teaches it to a whole group, by the time it gets to that level, 90% or more of it's going to stick, is going to be learned. And so the whole idea is if we can teach people about alpaca gold, and we get them to teach other people about alpaca gold, and they teach others at that point, that third generation, 95% of the people are going to be getting the knowledge. Same thing with Evan, with progressive gardening and with 
with microbe makers and with the whole bio biointensive farm bio in, integrative farming and so on let's see we had somebody else that just came on here tyler for sure we say this all the time in my courses. Um, he's saying the same thing. He's agreeing. You want to create a brand evangelist, especially for all the great things uh, that are being done here. So obviously awesome, Tyler. Appreciate it. Um, brand evangelist. That's a great one. Um, again, we've got an open seat here. If anybody would like to jump in and um, Evan, uh, happy days. Uh, Richard's asking you where you're at, but you're putting in. So you guys are figuring it out. You're looking at the, the chat at the same time. Bob, are you figuring out what's going over there on the side too and seeing that? Uh, you know, Wayne, is a new experience to me and I understand. Now the stuff on the side, is that just chats that are taking place somewhere else? No, that's us. Those are people us. watching us and they're commenting on what we're saying and they're asking questions and so on. I'll give everybody a little hint. If you put a forward slash Q and then type, that'll, that'll show up as a question. So try it, Evan. Just do that. Just throw a question out there. Just go forward slash Q in that where it says send a message. And then you're going to see that it'll look different. It'll have a little Q. It'll have a little question in front of it. Let's see. Um, yep. See, it came across as a question. What is everyone's favorite oh, yep. plant? So, um, hmm. There we go. What is the, uh, so um, we'll be opening a satellite location in the Swansboro area early next year from, uh, from Richard. Where is Swansboro? <laughs> that, that must be near you, Evan. Is that, that someplace you know about? Yeah, it's not far. I'm, I'm actually curious to see how far. Let me, let me see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's on the coast. That's up about maybe an hour from us. Jacksonville, it's it's to the coast from Jacksonville. So Jacksonville is about 45 minutes, depending on traffic. So that, that's not far at all. Wow. So, Ronald, welcome. How are you doing, man? Um, we're just having a chat here about sustainability and about uh, – making this planet a better place. And I've got a bunch of different guests here. I've got Robert Sal Salazar from the Grand Junction area. Evan Folds is on. Teresa, if you want to jump back on, um, we, unless anybody else wants to jump in here, we're going to go for about another five minutes or so. Um, so if anyone would like to jump in and, and talk about whatever you're doing on the sustainability area. Richard's been wandering around in his greenhouse, he's told us, and he's given us all kinds of great information. You just said that on the H, so Saving the Green uh, is back. Teresa's back here. I'm going to add her back in. When she comes back in, I'm going to ask her this. She'll, I'll ask, so she's probably hearing it now because she's coming in. Tell us, Teresa, about how um, if you use this, the cutting globes, uh, you told me about, I think it's wisteria, um, how it takes seven years when you plant a sprout in the ground for it to flower. And yet if you use the cutting globes, it'll literally flower as soon as you've taken it and put it into the ground. Tell us about that because what, and what experience have people had with cuttings? My experience is that about one out of 10 of them that I plant succeeds. And yet with the cutting globe, it's like nine out of 10 that will succeed. So an amazing um, improvement in the way that your plants do. But, but what, what, am I right about the plant? Was it wisteria? You're right. It was wisteria. And I've never grown it myself, but apparently it takes from when you first plant it seven years for the plant to reach a certain size or a certain vitality that it, that it will start to flower. And because in, you're not taking a tiny cutting, you're taking a large branch. So when you plant it into a pot or into the ground, it actually flowers or fruits right within the first season. So if you get your cutting off, your cutting globe off and plant it at the early part of the season, it'll actually flower right then, right that part of the year. So it's amazing. When you think it cuts seven years out of normal growing time, there's nothing, you wouldn't get anything like it using cuttings. Um, and when you talk about the the success rate, there's really no reason why air propagation shouldn't work unless you do it wrong. And I find that the only times that my plants don't grow roots is when I've made a mistake. So there's a little bit to know about how much bark to remove. You don't want to remove too much or too little. 
it'll either maybe heal itself and grow the bark back, or it might um, kill the branch if you take too much off and you kill all the circulation of the branch altogether. By the way, there has been success, Evan, with hardwoods. Um, and one of the people that we'll have on these uh, moving ahead is Mark Shepard that I was telling you about um, yesterday. And Mark <laughs> has had some amazing success with some hardwoods that he's working with um, in his agroforestry restoration work that he's doing. But, but I do know- In cloning them? In, in doing some cloning and also, but also in, 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 like I said, just putting in different kinds of cuttings. Um, but yes, he has had some success with cloning. Hmm. Well, because I've, I've, you know, success, air layering uh, is the way I've always done hardwoods. And I, I remember trying to get camellias to, to root because they're, they grow very well in our environment and they're very popular here. And I got, I think it was maybe one out of 20 and, and it was called a, it was easy clone cloning machine, which is aeroponics where the water's just, you know, misting up big drops. And, and I think, um, what, what was being discussed in the thread there was fog ponics, which decreases the size of the particle of the water. Um, so it's, it's more of a, the micron size is smaller. And I guess the rationale is it's easier for the, for the nutrients that you're putting into the solution to infiltrate into the plant. Um, but I personally have not had a whole lot of, of success taking cuttings from hardwoods and cloning them. But, and that's why I'm so intrigued with, what was the name of your product again? It was the, the, uh, the uh, cloning product, the air layering oh, product. It's called a cutting globe. A cutting globe, right. I mean, that, that's why I'm so intrigued with that because like I said, we use you know, plastic bottles and that kind of thing, uh, but the convenience and the UV part was, was brilliant. I, I didn't even consider that, Ter um, but that makes a lot of Teresa, sense. Teresa, I'm gonna mm. knock you for a second. Mike says he can maybe sure. get back on now. So I'm gonna knock you off and Mike, why don't you try to jump back in? Okay, Mike's trying one more time. He was, I think he's trying to see about getting his. So Mike, you're, uh, we're giving you, we're giving you one shot here. Oh, wow. I see you, Mike. Mike, hey. you're there. You're there. <laughs> you're there. Yeah. I'm alive. Yeah, yeah. Now the question is, can you hear me? Oh, I can. Yes. yes. Yep. You're there, okay. man. Look at this. Okay, great. So uh, what did you, you have to tell us, what did you do? Because you, well, you got something to work. You know what? Kind of like Bob. Forget about it. It would take me all day to try and figure out what I just did. But, uh, <laughs> I, I am glad anyway. with you. <laughs> it, it's working. So I actually don't know if it's my webcam or it's the new Logitech uh, webcam that I bought. So I don't know which one I'm on. But at any rate. Uh, it's I'm excellent. Here. Bob, it, it, you know what? I'll give you a little hint, Mike, about how you might be able to tell which one has a light on it right now when both they when they're working oh they both, both do <laughs> so you so you really don't know which one no i really don't okay okay um so i'm going to ask mike a couple questions um we are in a big launch situation right now with mike for his products which are amazing products and he was starting to describe them before before he went offline um but um instead of describing the product i'd like to get this because we can get it recorded um one of the, the customer types that Mike would be marketing to, that we're marketing to, are people who are suffering some, from some kind of a life-threatening disease. So things like cancer, diabetes, um, you name it, in, in all kinds of things. And, and he'll give you specifics about why um, the product that he has works. But a big question is that people have had, how do I know that your product isn't going to hurt me? In other words, it may not work. I get that, you know, and, and but I don't want it to make it worse. I'm already in a life threatening situation. So tell tell everybody, tell the, us, the four of us here. And we've still got 11 other people out there. Why well, I wouldn't have to worry if I took your product. Well, no, number one, um, let me back up real quick for those of those you that maybe didn't hear. Uh, it is an immune boosting supplement that we produce and it's a what makes it uh, so you don't have to worry about it, it is bioidentical to a protein that your body already produces. All mammals produce this protein from our thymus gland. When our thymus, uh, when we become about, in humans, when we become about 40 years of age, our thymus gland has lost its use for all practical purposes. It's shrunk up and it no longer produces this protein or produces very, very little protein. Why this is so central to our immune system uh, there have been many 
doctors and uh, scientists that have come down to the immune system starts with the thymus gland. It is where the our, th our immune system is modulated. And these proteins, they, they um, synthesize or charge, if you will, our cells, the CD4 cells, which are our searcher cells. So they go out and they, they find pathogens, whether it be virus, bacteria, uh, cancer, any, any mutant cell in our body. And then they, they tell the killer cells to kill those cells. So what, what happens is we found an extraction process to, by which we um, extract this protein from thymus, uh, calf thymus gland. Um, and it, it's worked very well. It's uh, because it's the same that our bodies produce. There is no side effects, no matter what you're taking, any drugs or anything else, because it's something that your body already produces. So that that's the answer. The short answer, I guess, that you were trying to ask is, what do you what is there to worry about? There's nothing to worry about. Your body already produces this protein because it's bioidentical to the protein that your body produces. Your body doesn't know by ingesting it whether your body produced it or it's from an outside source. Your body does not know the difference. And all mammals produce this protein. Let me ask you a question. How does that or uh, what effect would that have on somebody who's got MS? Um, if, if it is immune related and MS, I just don't know the answer to. Um, if it's any autoimmune uh, disease, which MS may be, I'm not sure. I know rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. I, I'm not sure how it'll work. If it's immune related, it will work and it will help uh, relieve both symptoms and it will end and can help cure cancer. It's the thing about any disease that, that I believe and everything that my research has told me is that there no can cure anything. The only thing that can cure any disease is our own bodies. And our own body's immune system is what was designed perfect. Our bodies are perfectly designed to fight all diseases. Is um, this protein but, found in, in food other than production in the body? No, it is not. It is yeah. simply only produced in the thymus gland from the thymus gland. And, and that's what makes it unique. That's what <laughs> makes it special because you can't get this protein from supplementation. There's other immune modulating or immune building supplements that we know that you can take. Uh, certain plant sources, um, different things, all different kinds of areas that help build the immune system. But your immune system has two different parts to it. And this is the inner part or self, if you will, the innate system that is within our own bodies. Um, that, that's what is exciting about this product because there, there, there's been thymus products for many, many years, probably for close to at least 80 years that I know of. And uh, they've had some good results, but what the, the person that developed our product with, with my father, who's a doctor, they got together and figured out the right proteins to extract from the thymus gland. The thymus gland produces 50 or 60 different proteins. Our, Mike, yes. I'm going to interrupt just a second. Yeah, you guys, are you guys seeing me right now, by the way? Because mine says yeah. poor, poor internet. Yeah, I'm seeing you. Yeah, okay. we're seeing you and hearing you. Okay, great. Um, these guys, and I'm going to interrupt just because we're coming up to the end yeah, of it. Yeah. I don't want to get... Um, but Mike's got a huge, amazing message to tell guys, just like Evan does, just like Bob does. And that's the whole purpose that we're doing these because we want to get you guys' messages out there. You should hear the testimonials that Mike has, Evan, for people mm. who have used this product. I mean, wow. it, they'll, they'll cause you to cry, quite honestly. Wow. Mike, put the, put the uh, URL on the screen in the little chat down at the bottom for AHC real quick, just so that maybe just put the BioPro Plus on there so people on here can click on it. By the way, when this is done, everybody, so we're going to sign off now. Uh, first, I want to thank Mike for being here. I want to thank Teresa. I want to thank Areeb. I want to thank Bob. I want to thank Evan. All of those of you that are out there watching and that, that were um, in there, Richard, who was on for a while, um, and also... Um, Tyler um, and everybody else. Um, and we're going to do these on a regular basis. Tell your friends about them. Tell them about Alpaca Gold and how they can learn about something that can be a great fertilizer. Tell them about Evan and his message that and he really does want to get it out to the world about how we can be better, better use of our land and how 
basically we're starving ourselves because we're not getting nutrients because we don't have them in the soils or in what we're growing plants in and about Mike and Mike's message is a lot broader and bigger than just this one product bio pro plus. But right now that's one of what we're really promoting. So our goal is to get this message out. We're going to do these on a, a wide basis. Evan just got a fly or something. There in front of him. Got awesome. me. I loved it. Um, like I said, we're going to use this to do things like showing, you know, um, uh, tours as we're doing them where we can see different things. You can see this. It's going to show you how you can use your camera and a phone and so on. Very amazing platform and tool. Uh, we got one person with Richard today that came on that we didn't ever, none of us knew. And Richard says he's interested in all of what we're doing. So, Mike, I was so glad that you figured out how to use your your computer. <laughs> all those of those of you that are on our webinar jam, Deb's saying that it's getting cold and the weather's building. I'm here in sunny Cleveland. I'm going to go out and take a run. And two weeks from now, we'll be doing another one of these webinars. And we'll actually, Mike, I think I'm going to ask you to be, if you could be the one that we could interview in two weeks. Bob, we're going to get you on one of them individually. And then we're going to start doing these blabs forever all over the community. So say bye to all on. you guys. Blab right. on. Blab on. Yeah. Blab Thanks, on. Wayne. All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I'm Thanks going to sign everybody. off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.